let us be lowly, oh God. Let us not be wise in our own eyes, oh God. Oh God, cast out the spirit of, of that Jezebel and that controlling spirit, oh God. Cast out that competitive and that comparison spirit, oh God. Cast out that envious and that jealous spirit, oh God. Cast it out of us, oh God. Cast out that antichrist spirit within us, oh God. Cast it out in the name of Jesus, oh God. And let us bear the fruit of the spirit, oh God. Oh God, let us have the spirit of love. Let us have the spirit of peace, oh God. Let us have the spirit of joy, unspeakable joy, oh God. Let us have the spirit of kindness and gentleness and goodness and faithfulness and patience in the name of Jesus, oh God. Let us have that spirit of faithfulness, oh God. Hallelujah, of self-control, Lord God. Oh God, help us to put on the armor of light, oh God. For you said that those that follow you will not, work in dark, will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, oh God. Help us to put on your whole armor, oh God. Oh God, that we don't just put on piece by piece when we want to, but that we put it on and we keep it on, oh Father God. That we don't take it off. That it's a part of our skin, oh God. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. The shoes prepared in the gospel of peace, oh God. That strong belt of truth, Father God. Oh God, the sword of the spirit. That shield of faith, Father God. Let us not walk by sight, oh God. But let us walk by faith, oh God. Let us fight the good fight of faith, oh God. Oh God, let us live by faith, oh God. But you cannot be pleased without faith, oh God. Oh God, let us be like those hall of faithers, oh God. Oh God, but let us set our eyes on things that are not seen, but things that are unseen, Father God. Oh God, let us keep our minds on things that are in the heavenly realms and not on the things that are on the earth, oh God. The things that will not rust, oh God. The things that will not grow moth, oh God. Things that are in the heavenly realms, oh God. Oh God, let us set up our treasures in the heaven, oh God. Let you be our true treasure, oh God. Oh God, you said that wherever our treasure is, is where our heart will be, oh God. Oh God, so you be that treasure, oh God. You be the treasure of our hearts, oh God. It's you, God, you. You we want, oh God. Oh God, make us to be men and women after your own heart, oh God. Let us not grieve your Holy Spirit on your home, on your heart, Lord God. But let us be women and men after your own heart, Father God. Let us seek the things of your heart, Father God. Let us ask about your day, how your day is today, oh God. Let us inquire of you, oh God, your feelings, your emotions, oh God. Oh God, let us think about you and not ourselves, oh God. Let us ask about you, Lord God, what you want, how you want it, your desires, oh God, your will, not our own, oh God. Let us continue to delight in you, oh God. For your word declares that when we delight in you, that you will give us the desires of your heart, oh God. Oh God, let it be so tonight, oh God. Let it be so in our lives, oh God. Let us not just do it tonight, oh God, but let us be a lifestyle, oh God. Let us have a mindset, oh God. Give us the mind of Christ, oh God. Let us think on things that are lovely, oh God, that are true, oh God, that are noble, oh God, that are admirable, oh God. Things that are worthy of praise, oh God. Things of a good report, oh God. Let us not listen to gossip, oh God, and backbiting, oh God, and the naysayers, oh God. But let us think on things that are of a good report, Father God. Oh, what is in your word, oh God? We thank you, Father God, that you have chosen us, oh God. We thank you that you have made us fishers of men, oh God. We will continue to fish, oh God. We will continue to do it, oh God. In, in your power, to your glory, oh God. Fill us, oh God. Lead us and guide us through the power of your spirit, oh God. Give us the willingness. Give us the courage, oh God, to do it, oh God. To be fishers of men. To disciple, oh God. To preach the good news. To spread the good news of the gospel. That's what you've given us charge to do. To do, oh God. To heal the sick, oh God. To baptize, oh God, in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Ghost, oh God. To cast out those demons, oh God. You've given us the power and the authority to do it, oh God. And so increase, oh God, our belief, oh God. Remove, remove any doubt or disbelief we have within us, oh God. Oh God, let's, let us believe by faith that we can truly do all things through Christ who gives us the strength to do it, oh God. Hallelujah, God, we give you glory. We give you praise, oh God. We just lift up our hands to you, Father God. We say hallelujah, God. We give you the highest praise, Lord, because you're worthy, God. You are worthy, not for what you do, oh God, but for who you are. You are worthy if you don't do another thing, oh God. Hey, I'm gonna also. Oh God, if you don't do another thing, oh God, you've done more than enough. You have given us your ultimate gift, your sacred gift. Oh God, your good and your perfect gift. Your son, Jesus Christ, oh God, who has given us freedom and salvation. Oh God, eternal and everlasting life, whose blood has covered every sin of yesterday, today and to come, oh God. Our sins have been washed away. Our iniquities, our trespasses, oh God, are in the sea of no more. He cannot remember them, oh God. And so you've given us everything, oh God. Oh God, so if you don't do another thing, oh God, you've done more than enough, oh God. And we say hallelujah. We say glory to your name. 
You are enough. You, God. You, Jesus. You, Father. You, Holy Spirit. You are more than enough. And we give you glory. And we bless your holy name. And it is in the name of Jesus that we do ask and pray and believe that you will do all these things in us tonight. For us and through us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Hallelujah and amen. Come on, San Francisco. Can we make some noise? Come on, this is the last night. I don't want to pity back. Can we make some noise? Can everybody stand to their feet? Just stand to your feet right there and just begin to give God glory. Come on, right where you are, begin to give God glory. Come on, I need that sound. Come on, buddy, turn up, turn up. Come on, can we give God a sound of praise? Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Then the Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. Not sometimes, but all times. And it says, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. How come I don't hear you, San Francisco, giving God your biggest praise? Come on, let's enter in. Let's enter into his courts with praise. Let's enter in with thanksgiving. Because he woke us up this morning. He started us on our way. He put food on our table. You didn't have a stroke today. You ain't gonna have the activities of your limbs. You're able to breathe. You're able to see. For that we should be giving God glory. I don't know about you, but do I have some glad folks in the house tonight that's glad because he woke you up, glad because he gave you an opportunity at life. He refreshed your mind. He restored your soul. He proclaimed you from the backside state that you was in. And tonight we call it done that God will get the glory. We gonna tell the devil that he's defeated. We gonna tell the devil that he's under arrest. We gonna tell the devil that he has no power. This is the day. Somebody say, this is the day. Say, this is the day. That will be, come on, that will be the best day of our lives. Come on, San Francisco, make some noise. Come on, come on, and continue to put your hands together and let's worship the Lord in this place. For the pastor said, I decree and declare that today is going to be what?
devil inside of my feet. Oh, the devil inside of my feet. The best day of my life. shadows can deny your name cannot be overcome your name is a light forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome can y'all help me sing Jesus darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence me. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you Sing it again. Me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you make, you make the darkness tremble. Say, Jesus, Jesus, silence fear. Jesus, oh, oh. Jesus, you make, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. You silence Sing it again. Jesus, 
you silence me. That the shadows can deny your name cannot be overcome your name is a light forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome oh your name your name is a light that the shadows can deny your name Keep it me. God, I thank you for 
are keeping me. You are with me. Cause you are with me. You are with me. Say, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. God, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Don't you dare let me go. Don't you dare let me go. Don't you dare let me go. Power yours is the glory forever on me. Can you sing that, D? Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever on me. can you raise that up? Come on. the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever all Come on, Kim. Men. Raise it up. Raise it up, no music. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. Can everybody raise it up? Come on, everybody, yours. say that you are with me you are with me raise it up say you are with me come on everybody you are with me yes God you are you are with me even when it doesn't seem like you it he's with you with say please don't leave me please don't the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever on me everybody say yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever on me come on if you believe that lift your hands all over the room come on lift your hands all over the room 
Now open up your mouth. Come on. Come on, open up your mouth. I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, can we clap our hands for the Lord? Amen. For the word declares where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. And we believe with songs such as what we have just offered and rendered up to our great king, he's able to give us the gift of attachment. For the word of God says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Is with that gift of attachment, we believe that God is able to overcome every single one of all of our abandonment issues. Amen. Amen. And so if you never had a father tell you that he loves you, there's a heavenly father. And there is an everlasting father. Amen. Who has come to give us life and life eternal. For the word of the Lord declares, how be it we speak wisdom among them which are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, which come to naught, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. As it is written, eye has not seen, nor ears heard, nor thought has entered into the hearts of men, the things which the Lord has promised to those that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For his spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. I bring you greetings and a God bless you. I am here simply to offer a word, not words, a word of reflection. A word of reflection. And it is from this posture of reflection, one is able to enter into a mode of introspection. It has been suggested that our generation is the most photographed but the least introspective. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there's a simple word that I want to share with all of you all as we would be a part of this amazing celebration, which is simply this, better. Come on, look at three people and just say better. Better, 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 better. Better is the intentional and the incremental progress as a result of embracing the divine that allows us to walk out our change, growth, and transformation. And when one is able to experience revival, when, when revival is done correctly, it allows us to arrive at a place called better. And, and so when one thinks about revival, listen, I'm almost done. There's a couple of ingredients that goes into a revival. The first thing is disruption. When revival is done right, there's an ingredient called disruption. When disruption comes, it comes to disrupt our current thinking in order to usher us into a different mentality. It's really the Greek word called metanoia. Now, some of y'all thinking about paranoia. You paranoid. We ain't talking about being paranoid. Paranoia is when the mind turns on itself. But metanoia is to go beyond the mind you presently have. And so with revival, God introduces us to a way of thinking that is no longer compatible with the new season that we are being called into. Somebody say disruption. Now, it is then out of our disruption, God then gives us the ability to perceive our distractions. Distractions are the things that not only cause us to be attached to, but hold our attention. And God begins to reveal to us the things that are distracting us from our divine purpose in him. And so it is in revival we begin to recognize that the things that we have been deterred and distracted by can no longer be a part of our next season in the Lord. Then the last thing that happens in a good old revival is that you get a good ingredient called determination. I'm sorry, you, you get determination. You get a gospel-infused courage to embrace the truth no matter how much it hurts. 
Hallelujah. And it is in that in that great in that grace that we receive to be determined, we have a divine courage that holds on to what God's truth is until we can see the manifestation of the promise. Okay, it's really simple. When we think about determination, determination is the bridge between orthodoxy and orthopraxy. Some of you got right doctrine, you ain't got right behavior. And if your doctrine doesn't impact your behavior, then something's wrong with your doctrine. And so when you come into a revival, God disrupts us, God reveals our distractions, and then he gives us a determination. And so when we get that determination, we arrive at a place called better. We become better servants. We become better husbands. We become better wives. We become better pastors. We become better parents. Come on, we become better workers. We become better intercessors. We become better givers. And when you become better, guess what you're going to do? You got to do. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Somebody say you we need to rewind that back. See, when it's better like that, you can rewind it. Amen. And get it again. Because it just keeps getting better and better and better and better and better. Amen. Woo, did you get that? I said, did you get that? Amen. You arrive at a place called better. But you got to have those ingredients. Amen. I didn't get up here to try to preach his sermon. Amen. Because that, that brother right there, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for him. Amen. I am made the better because of that brother. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm up here again. Amen. I'm up here again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're here the last night. And I want you to listen to me real good. Listen to me and listen to me good. Haven't we had a blessed time in the Lord? Amen, amen, amen. And I'm telling you, you know, when you give, God gives back to you more in ways than you never thought possible. Dr. Bailey, amen, God bless you. Amen, and we're so thankful for you, and Dr. Dews. Amen. We want we want you to give tonight. We have been pledging all week long. Twenty five dollars. You know, we're asking. We're asking everyone because let me tell you something. To put on something like this, it takes money. Amen. Amen. And the cost of inflation and all these things. But I'm, I'm telling you, this committee, give this committee a hand clap of praise. Um, I'm, I'm pointing them out because for many, many years, and Dr. Bailey and Dr. Dews can, can attest, we have had citywide revivals. And the generations are shifting and changing. But the necessary ingredients to hold a citywide revival still remains the same. <laughs> and so I'm asking you, I'm asking you to, to be uh, obedient. And again, I lied. I've been lying all week long. <laughs> I said that Every night, I, I, I said that, that I was going to give 25. And Sunday night, I ended up giving 100. Monday night, I gave 100. Yesterday, I gave 100. And tonight, I'm giving 100. Amen. Amen. So, so listen, listen. And, and, and let me just say this because... Um, last night when, when we left out of here and didn't we have a great time yeah 
me and the me and the wife we we went to uh, Pancho Villa last night. Amen. And 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 I paid. Somebody say I paid forty six dollars and eighty one cents for two burritos. Hey man, two burritos, two super burritos with watermelon and uh, pineapple fresca, 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 almost fifty dollars. Hey Amen. Now if we gonna if if I'm gonna pay Pancha Vila, truly I can give to the Lord. Somebody say Amen. So your gifts tonight is going to bless. Oh, look, look, these musicians, give these, this, this musical team. Amen, amen. A praise team, choir, our evangelists. We want to make sure that they are taken care of. So ways to give, Cash App, uh, Grace Grants, Venmo, at Grace Grants. And then, I already said Cash App, I'll say it again. Uh, Grace Grants and make checks payable to Bay Area Church Life. Amen. Amen. We just want you to get into a habit. How many of you want to sow into your need tonight? Sow into your need. Sow into. I guarantee you. Now let me say this. I don't. I don't put nothing past God. But one thing I will say. If you give to the Lord. He will certainly turn right back around and give to you in ways that you never could imagine. Somebody give him a hand clap of praise on the night. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Lift up your high and holy name. As we prepare to give, those of us that be giving through our um, social media, through our outlets, through our phones and those that will physically be given be cash and checks. We pray that you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Follow the ushers. Where are ushers at? Everyone, please stand. Take your phone. Touch the basket. Amen. We want you to give tonight. And I'm talking about give in a very special, special, special way on tonight. Amen. 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 If you can't do 25, do 20. If you can't do 20, do 10. Can't do 10, do 5. But whatever you do, let the Lord lead you. Amen. As the kingdom of God marches on. Amen. Amen, amen. Come on, come on, come on. Be a blessing, be a blessing tonight. Be a blessing, be a blessing. Come on, come on, bless God tonight. Bless God tonight. Bless God tonight. My God.
right, sisters, this, this is the last night. Our ushers are coming, and I would love for us to bless our ushers by singing a familiar song. We are soldiers in the army. Brother, get it, brother. Straight out of Calvary Hill. One more time. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you for your giving. God is going to bless you. Amen. Well, citywide, as we're getting ready to receive our choir, I feel at this point he needs no introduction. He has preached the walls off again for night. What is it, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? It's going to be the third night that he is coming to preach to us. We learned about fishing. We talked about bait. And we can't wait to hear what the Lord has for us tonight. Y'all already know his name. Why don't y'all do me a favor say, Bishop Clark? Come on, y'all can do better than that. Bishop Clark? Preach to us.
right now. I'm not gonna be before you long. Is that alright? So, I had some unexpected property taxes. They just rang my doorbell. I said, well, what is this? Oh, Lord, where's this money coming from? Y'all know me, where this money coming from? So I filed my taxes, praying, and the very exact amount that's due on the property taxes is the amount that I'm getting back. I love him.
If you don't mind, let's stand tonight. If it's not too much to ask, can you stretch across the aisle so that everybody is touching each other? We're all connected. If you don't mind, thank you so much. Let's look to the Lord. God, we thank you. So now we come to the close of this week of revival. Thank you for what you shared with us on Sunday night, reminding us of your love and your grace and your mercy and your patience. Thank you, dear God, for sharing with us Monday about fishing. Like, and then on last night, telling us that our testimonies are the bait. We thank you for what we've heard. And God, I'm sure I speak on behalf of Pastor Pearl. We, we are only instruments. You get all of the glory. Thank you for this choir that has sung. Each night have poured out their hearts. Brought us into an awareness and a consciousness of who you are. Thank you. Thank you for these musicians. Prayed, allowing this service to not only have substance, but God to have feeling. Thank you. Thank you for President Dues and his support. Thank you. Thank you for Pastor Brian. Thank you for the Carrie Hill Church. Thank you. Thank you for these pastors. Thank you for New Generation. God, we thank you that you're not a God just for some people, but you're a God for everybody. Thank you. Now speak to our hearts and our minds. But we don't stand, stand for fame, fortune, nor for reputation. But until the end, someone leaves tonight having a relationship with God. Jesus name we pray amen now why don't you just hug two or three people and tell them say I'm glad to see you tonight 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 I have um, I've enjoyed my my time with you, San Francisco. I'm grateful. Yeah, I, I really have. I, and my prayer is that something has been said this week that uh, would cause your life to just be a little bit more better. But then, more importantly, that you, like I, will be motivated to tell people about Jesus. And I'm grateful for that. I really do, honestly, I really do hope that in the days and weeks to come that you'll remember that you got a fish. That you have to Y'all was kind of weak on that stuff. Y'all didn't know where I was going with that. I hope you'll remember that you have to fish, and to fish means to. And I hope you're never embarrassed, never, ever, ever embarrassed 
about your testimony. Because your testimony is the bait. It's your... Now some of y'all recite night like the person in the choir don't know the song. <laughs> you know that person? Get up and just cuts on a refresh. But I'm grateful to God. Let's give a hand clap of praise to God for all of those who put this together. God bless you. God bless you. You know, I, I learned in life that uh, some of the hardest things for believers to do is to take compliments. Because we figure if we say we take compliments, we take in the glory. No, 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 no. Listen, whenever somebody tells you you bless them, it's all right to say thank you. Listen, you can take the compliment, just give God the credit. Right? Yeah, no. Please, please don't think there's anything wrong. God gave you the gift. He's using you. Ain't nothing wrong with you feeling good about what God doing through you. Amen. And so for those of you all who put this together, God bless all of you all. Thank you so much. Amen. Let's give Pastor uh, Robert Pearl a hand, will we? Yes, indeed. Doc blessed us Sunday night. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for the pastors that are here. Thank God for Pastor Neil, who's been here. God bless you, man. God bless you. I told Neil that. I said, bro, you don't age. Hey, come on, Claude. I'm telling you, man. You know, I know some guys started out with us, bro. Well, you know how they look now. I ain't called nobody name. I'm just kidding. We're grateful to God for Pastor Tim. Amy, am I saying that right? God bless you, man. Thank you for being here, bro. Always good to see him. I haven't seen him in a minute. Pastor Anthony Braxton, God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Hillman, who's taught tonight, where is he? God bless you. Ooh. You and your wife, boy, y'all vote on it. Ooh. Now listen, be before I even start preaching, let me go and clear this up. Y'all hear my voice? I'm not used to all that hollering and screaming. See, last night, that's it. Ain't nothing left. So if you came here tonight, you should tell, you know what y'all going to leave? Y'all should have came last night. That's, that's what I mean. <laughs> we thank God for, Pastor Taylor, uh, uh, thank God for these pastors here. Thank God for, I got, and I keep saying, is it dudes? Dudes, okay. A double dose of the dudes. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. When, when I got here Monday and I saw how, how uh, no disrespect, how Lil Dudes was dressed, I'm saying, okay, he got some fashion style. Then I've been seeing you every night. He get it from his daddy. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. We honor you. Thank you for the work that you've done through these years. And thank you for your leadership. Thank you, man. You've been a wonderful host. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. I know what it's like to be around people that you respect only until you get around them and you realize they mean. So I thank you. I thank you for your hospitality, man. And I hope I haven't been mean. All right, thank you. And then to my nephew, Pastor Tolliver, God bless you, man. God bless you, sir. God bless you. And to my nieces, God bless you. God bless you. We thank God so much for them. Uh, we, I want to, I want to, take time and, and, and I've acknowledged him but I want to take time because I know what it takes to host something like this I think we just need to thank God for Pastor Brian and the cat come on y'all come on that's big this this major big this major big major big major big major big God bless you. Are there any other preachers or pastors here today? Any other preachers or pastors here today? Any other preachers or pastors here today? Oh, no, no. You know I ain't going to miss Dr. Bailey. That's it. You know, I, I got I got to give an introduction before I talk about Dr. I got to talk about my wife and my daddy now before I get to Dr. Bailey. I just want to make sure I haven't. Frog, that's you?
So, so y'all remember me telling y'all the story Monday. You remember me telling you the story Monday uh, about us taking Brotherhood to the club? Well, the owner of that club is riding with us tonight, Brother Paul Brown. Would you stand, Brother Paul? So if you're ever in deep East Oakland and you're around, uh, what is it? No, what's, what's, what's the address? 8916 East 14th. If you're ever around 8914, listen, y'all laughing, but you get deep East Oakland, you better know somebody. You may have to run in there and say, hey, I was at the revival. <laughs> and, and when we meet there on Tuesday night, when we meet there on Tuesday night, we meet there uh, and we transform apartment C to what we call Matthew's house. And so we're grateful to God. But that, uh, his name, I can call him Frog, but Frog back over there. Good to see you, baby. Good to see you. And, and, and he, who you next to? Give me your name again, bro. Sam. That big Sam, ain't it? Yeah, okay. All right. I, I thought that was you. I thought that was you. I thought that was you. Sam was here last night. All right. Uh, let, let me do this. Uh, tonight, I'm glad uh, D is back. Amen. Thank you. No, y'all got to clap loud. D don't do two services back to back. They don't do two services back to back now. I'm trying to tell you. Two nights in a row, the Lord is moving. <laughs> and then I'm grateful to God for my sister, Sister Mary Williams. She's with us again tonight. And then there's not, nobody else has this title, Nowhere in America. Uh, some couple of years ago, some of the... Uh, pastors and musicians and what have you got together and deemed this guy the governor of Bay Area music. Brother Daryl Norman is here. Governor is here. Amen. I was, uh, I don't know if Billy's here tonight, but Billy and I was talking. There he is. Billy and I was talking and uh, say, ain't nobody like the governor. <laughs> Good to see him. And then tonight, uh, we do have books uh, that we're going to sign tonight. Now, listen, we, it, time won't allow us to sign and make them out to everybody. So we're just going to write our signatures. Now, we learned that the hard way because we had a line and people standing. And you know, saints start stealing books. Yeah. No, seriously. Oh, that's all right. I got it. God bless you. No, no, God bless you here. And so... <laughs> And so uh, uh, we, we, we're, uh, we, we have some books. Uh, if I, somebody give me one of those books, Tolliver, out of the back. Give me one of them. I, I want to give somebody a book tonight. And so uh, I told you it's a book that was compiled by my father, my brother, and I. And uh, my dad's here today. Stand up, Dad. That's my dad. That's my daddy, y'all. Sam, this you. Want me to, I'm, I'll, I'll hold on to it, signing, but you got one from me. All right, thank you, bro. And then uh, my dad's here, and then my brother's here. Y'all stand up for my brother. single, well-employed, benefit-having brother. Oh, Lord. So, If you don't mind, if you don't mind, repeat this after me as we get ready to study, get into the word of God. I am so grateful. I was nervous last night. I'm, I don't even know why he came back. I thought he was going to stay home. One night would have been good enough. But he came back tonight and got me nervous all over again. Would y'all give it up to my mentor and one of my heroes, Dr. Stephen Bailey. <laughs> And 
his lovely wife, Sister Bailey. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Repeat this after me. Dear God, you know me. You know everything about me. You know what I'm going through. You know what I'm feeling. You know what I'm dealing with. Based upon what you know about me. Say something to me. That will cause my life. To be in your will. In Jesus name. Amen. Go with me to two passages of scripture. Well, uh, let me do it this way. I want to give you the first half of this sandwich, if you would. We'll drop the meat on it. And then we'll close the sandwich with the follow, with the last text. So I'll start with a passage give you the meat from it, and then we'll close it with a passage. Let me give it to you this way. I will explain the principle and then let you see it expressed in a picture. Or let's give you the substance and show you a symbol. No, I don't like that one. W what about this? Let me show you what it means and then show you how it's done. All right, we can go with that. All right, all right. Not, not, I tell people, don't rush me when I'm on my job. I don't rush y'all when you're on your job. Come on, you can rest yourselves, rest yourselves, rest yourselves, rest yourselves. The first passage I want to look at is Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. I want to talk tonight from the subject. How to have a relationship with God when you are not right. How to have a relationship with God when you are not right. You've got Romans chapter 10. Park right there. I'm on my way. This message, I have to be honest with you, was birthed out of a conversation I had with Paul. We were driving down the street, and I leaned over, and I said to Paul, I said, Paul, why do you think a lot of guys who are from the streets, or a lot of guys who've lived a life, or who, you know, had to hustle or do whatever to make a living, why do you don't think they give Jesus a try? And I never shall forget his response. I'm bracing myself, Doc, because I'm thinking he's going to come up with the typical excuses, you know, well, folk don't go to church because there are too many hypocrites in church. And I understand that. There, is hypo there are hypocrites in church, but they're hypocrites at house. You looked at a hypocrite when you looked in a mirror. Hypocrites are everywhere. Yeah, you know, we, we, we don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Hypocrite is just to act like something that you're not. Now, don't tell me you ain't hypocritical because there are some folk you don't like. But when you get around them, you act like you like them. If it ain't no more because you don't want to hear your mama mouth, get on. You see what I'm saying? So I, I was bracing myself for those kinds of responses. But that's not what I got. P told me, he said, little bro. It's not just men from the street. It's men in general. And the issue that men have is not that they don't want a relationship with God. 
Most men don't think God wants a relationship with them. And I came tonight on the last night of the first new generation citywide revival to say that there's a lie that has been spreading across the town. And it's a lie that's been around for a long time. And no disrespect, but it's a lie that stemmed from saints who meant well but were ill-informed. Saints who perhaps were spirited but not spiritual. And boy, if I had time to tell you all about that. Because there's a big difference between being spirited. And being spiritual. See, being spirited, you can shout, holler, holler, little boy, say, that's a spirited person. But when you're spiritual, spiritual people know how to control themselves. Spiritual people know how to love one another. Spiritual people walk in peace. Spiritual people promote harmony. Spiritual people pray for their enemies. Spiritual people don't try to get back. Spiritual people are not petty. Spiritual people are not holding on to grudges. And the problem with the church is we love being spirited. We just can't stand being spiritual. But I believe that there is a generation that God is raising up. There is a culture of believers who's saying, I just don't want to feel good. I want to live good. So I just don't want to be spirited. I want to be spirit. And so they were meant well. But indeed it was a lie. Perhaps not intentional. Perhaps not from a malicious place. But nonetheless, we've deceived people. And let me share something with you, San Francisco. If freedom... If truth breeds freedom, then deception going to keep you in bondage. If truth brings freedom, then deception keeps you in bondage. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? I think it's important for me to throw this right along through here. I can't stay too long because I got some ground to cover tonight. But I think I need to throw this out here because when we start talking or at least when it's talked about being free, people instantly think no responsibility. No, 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 no. Wherever there's relationship, there's responsibility. Wherever there's relationship, there's responsibility. And the strength of that relationship, or rather the growth of that relationship, or the benefit of that relationship, expresses itself when there is responsibility. Let me see if I can explain it to you. Every husband in here understands that. Ah, uh, listen man, you can marry that woman. You can have kids with that woman. But you won't get respect from that woman if you are not responsible. Because you can't spec a person who's not responsible. A man who's not responsible is going to be hard to be respected. But where there is relationship, there's responsibility. Where you going, Bishop? Okay, let me give it to you, Deep, Oast, uh, deep East Oakland style. Where you going with it? Here it is. Uh, if he is responsible... If he makes sure that he pays the bills, if he may, and not that you need him to, boo-boo, because he is not a necessity, he's just a benefit. I ain't got nobody here to help me here. But when he has been responsible, it makes that relationship sweeter because his love may give you thrills, but it's going to take some money to pay them bills. And when he is responsible, you ain't got no problem walking with him, talking with him, listening to him, following him because he's responsible. Well, I'm an equal opportunity preacher. Come here, brother. 
Come on, let's talk about her, brother. You want a woman who is responsible. You don't want her to bring to the table. The only thing she brings to the table is a knife and a fork. You want something more than that. I need more than your appetite. I need your assistance. Now, you ain't got to sponsor me, but you ought to assist me. You ain't got to pay the mortgage, but take care of the PG&E bill. You ain't got to pay the car note, but make sure we got gas because we both riding together. All I'm trying to tell you is where there's relationship, there's responsibility. So when I talk about freedom, I'm not talking about being irresponsible. I'm talking about being responsible and enjoy being responsible. You see, freedom as a believer is not you getting to do what you want. Freedom as a believer is you understanding all you get to do. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Some of y'all can't shout and your relationship with God is so miserable because all you looking at the tree that you can't eat from. But you forget that the command didn't start off with what you couldn't do. The command started off with what you could do of every tree. I wish I had some real folk who could stand up and say, I'm going to enjoy my trees. Every tree. I, I, I couldn't stay that long, but I wanted to throw that out there. That, that, that's for those who will say, yeah, but. No, 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 ain't no buts in here. Here's the lie. The lie that the well-intended, misinformed, not malicious, not vicious and intentionally. In the words of Precious Hunter Clark, who made 99 other they didn't mean no harm. <laughs> but here's the lie. And I promise you that this lie is what grips you when it comes down to where you are with God. This lie. You've heard it before. Here it is. And that is, you cannot have a relationship with God and you ain't right. You can't have a relationship with God. Because you ain't right. Or, or maybe you heard the lie this way. Don't come in here playing with God. Coming down this aisle, giving the Lord your heart, talking about you giving God your heart. And then Monday through Saturday, you're out there living any kind of way. Mm -hmm. See, right about now, it's really uneasy, ain't it? Oh, yeah, right about now, it's uneasy. Now, see, you wouldn't leave here right now because you don't know where I'm going. Thank you, Bishop Jones. <laughs> I done threw you off. You, you don't, where, where is he going with this? But that's what we've heard. That's what they've told us in one shape, form, or fashion. They've communicated to us all that you can't have a relationship with God when you ain't right. And as a result of that, what do we seek to do? We seek to do right. We seek to do right. And so now we're going around dotting every I and crossing every T and getting frustrated when we can't commit our goals and we set rules and boundaries for ourselves. Now, you know you're in bad shape when you can't do what he say. And then when you can't do what he say, you kind of water that down so you could put something up that you can handle. And you got two or three weeks where you're doing that and then you find up messing up the own rules you set for yourself. You know, it's all like when you're fasting and you're on a 21 day fast and them first seven days you got it going on. But then you forget your fasting and now you're at lunchtime eating burgers and fries. And then somebody said, oh, Lord, I forgot. Now you're feeling miserable. God ain't going to answer your prayers. You're ready to just quit. Ain't no sense because I ain't going to be playing with God. And now because you didn't quit. I ain't got nobody here to help me. See, I understand this kind of preaching ain't what's needed. Or rather, this kind of preaching is what's needed, but it's not what's like. Because you know when you teach freedom, people lose control. 
Are you here with me so far? If you understand me so far, say amen. amen. Now, that's the lie. I want to show you, first of all, before we even get to the text, how foolish the lie is. You cannot have a relationship with God. I didn't say nothing about church. I ain't say nothing about being baptized. I ain't say nothing about no discipleship classes. I say nothing about Sunday school class. I say nothing about Bible study. This message is not about your spiritual development. This Well, it is about your spiritual development. It's not about you being discipled. It's about you being evangelized. Why is that so important? Because so many times we're trying to clean fish before we catch them. And a lot of people don't think they are saved because they've got a messed up understanding about how their relationship was attained. And when you don't understand how it was attained, you're going to be confused about how it's maintained. But if you understand how you get in, you'll know how you stay in. And the truth of the matter is you didn't get in. Oh, okay, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Let me, let, me, let me show you. Watch how foolish the lie is. You can't have a relationship with God and you ain't right. That's the lie. Watch, watch how foolish it is. Jesus is righteous. Yes, he is. Jesus is holy. Yes, he is. Jesus is perfect. Yes, he is. Jesus hates sin. Yes, he does. Jesus is excellent and he's without any flaws, without any blemish. Show you right. That's Jesus. I am sinful, born in sin, shaping in iniquity. I'm low down. I'm messed up. I can folk. Because y'all ought to. Turn to your name and say, we all in it together tonight. You see, some of y'all can't shout. And I know why. I know why you ain't responding right now. See, when I talk about myself like that, it makes you cringe. Huh? I know because sin always looks worse on somebody else than it does on you. You see, when I talk about my sin, that's a low down, dirty shame. And he called himself a preacher. But now you can be guilty of the same thing. And your response, well, ain't nobody perfect we all got something we struggling with but we are all sinners in need of salvation wait a minute now Jesus is right I ain't right I can't get right but you then told me I can't have a relationship with God if I ain't right. Now, I'm telling you I ain't right, but I'm telling you I can't get right. So what I'm going to do? Well, you got to get the lie out your head because the only way I can get right when I ain't right is until the one who is right come in my life. In other words, if you got a drug problem, you can have a relationship with Jesus. If you got an alcohol problem, you can have a relationship with good. If you got a player problem, you can have a relationship with Jesus. If you got a Magda or a pimp stress mentality, you can have, if you are a gambler, you can have a relationship with God. Wait a minute. If you're a gospel, you mess it. You always keeping up stuff. You pet it. You can have a relationship with God. How how can that be, Bishop? Because you can't get out of the struggle until Jesus gets in you. When you get in you, then you got a relationship. In other words, you can't get right without him. Give somebody a high five. Say, I got to get him in. I got to get him in. And Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You still ain't feeling me like I need you to. Y'all sit down. I got some work to do. You, 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 you still ain't feeling me. See, you see, you see, you see. You can't do anything to 
get right apart from him. Because he's the one who makes it right. The lie has you thinking that there's something you got to do in order for him to come or accept you. No, 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 no. There is nothing I can do. I am not good enough. I am not thoughtful enough. There is no one who seeks after God. There is no one who is drawn by God by his own will. I'm messed up. I'm naughty by nature. So how do I get out of this? The only way I get right is through my relationship. Look at your name and say, neighbor, the only way you get right with God is through the relationship. The only way you're getting in is through the relationship. The only way you're making it into heaven is through the relationship. You're not getting in because you're right. You're getting in because you're in relationship. And when you're in relationship, you've been made right. You've been made right. Y'all ain't feeling me like I need you to. Okay, okay. It's, it's about a year before the pandemic. Short over on this side, short, too short. Brother Whistle, whew, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on this side in concert. When short comes to town, he come to church. Short come in the word. Pete gets me on, Paul gets me on the list to go to the concert. I don't care. I, I'm not, man, look, please. Like you don't move. Dun, 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 dun. They say, well, why you go to his show? Because when he in town on Sunday, he come to church. Now, if he can come to church where I'm doing my thing, I'm going to see you do your thing. Now, see, some of y'all talking about, oh, you're going to destroy your witness. Them people didn't know I was coming. They would got tickets before I even showed up. This is, see, we, we talk, you ain't trying to protect witness. You're trying to guard your image because you don't want folk to know you got a life outside of choir rehearsal. <laughs> Bye, Felicia, not me. We, we, we go to the concert. I'm having trouble getting in. About this time, he sends some, Paul sends somebody out. And when he sends somebody out, they come and say, oh, no, he's with us. Now, there's a long line of people waiting to purchase tickets. But I bypass all of them. Not because I'm a thug. They call me at the wise guy and say, Bishop, you ain't no thug. You just a hip square. <laughs> I'll take it. I get in because I'm in relationship. Man, whoever you are in this building, brothers and sisters, but I'm definitely talking to the brothers. Man, don't you believe the lie. Whatever you're in, whatever you're involved in, you can have a relationship with God because what makes you right is the relationship. Now, everything I didn't say thus far, Ain't nothing but talk. Let's see what the text say. Paul said that if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, thou shalt be saved. Let's reread it or re recite it for those of us who know it. That if thou shall get yourself together, if thou shall put that weed down, if thou shall leave that drinking alone, if thou shall make sure you got everything together. That's not what he says. Now, you know why some of y'all are nervous right now? You know why you nervous right now when I just gave that list about the stuff? Because you can't fan them in your mind. 
How in the world would God, who is so holy and just, be willing to receive me with all of this stuff going on? And it's because you've been told the lie. See, you thought it was an effort. You thought it was your strong will. It, you thought it was you just being sick and tired. That had nothing to do what it was. And the reason why you're here tonight is because God wants you to know that I loved you when you were at your worst. Because even at your worst, I saw what's best in you. What you talking about Bishop Clark? In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. I dare you look at somebody and say, at my worst he saw the best. At my worst he saw my best. And you think I'm going to come in here and not give God praise because you know about something I did eight years ago. Man, you crazy. You think I ain't going to give God worship because you know something about my past? Ain't that why we were yet sinners? Christ died for the ungodly. Confess. Watch it now. Confess. Believe. Call. This, 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 this now, this me and Stephen Bailey conversation. Doc, I, I wrestled with him putting confess before believe. Because in 16, he just says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe it. Where's this confession come from? And, and it wasn't no real deep revelation. It was real simple. He said, well, it, th there was no need for Jesus to say in John 3, 16, if thou will confess, because he's the one talking to Nicodemus. This is a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Here Paul is sharing with you and I. And even Nicodemus then even acknowledged who he was. That I must be a teacher. You come from God. And Jesus cuts to the church. You know the story. But, but here Paul says, confess that he is Lord. Ah. Y'all, what makes Calvary so special what makes the blood so sufficient is it was the Lord who died God died uh, that's it no. okay 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 okay, okay. Jesus was not just a good teacher. He was God in the flesh. He was 100% God. And 100% perfect man. See, we say man. No, no, no. Not just man. Perfect man. He was a perfect man because his blood was not contaminated. In fact about it, you know what happened. The Bible says Mo, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she conceived. Which means that it was a perfect birth, a perfect conception. And he was born sinless because the Holy Spirit did the oversight. Now that's the same thing we have with the Holy Scriptures because when you read the Bible all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So here you got a holy book written by imperfect men. How did that happen? Because the Holy Spirit oversees the work. He says no Scripture is given by inspiration but it's, well come on I wish I had somebody here to help me. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is God breathed, breathed is a Spirit of God. So I can trust the Scriptures because when it was put together the Holy Holy Spirit oversaw the process. Ah, ah, ah. Jesus is God in the flesh. Ah. One God manifested in three ways. He's Father. He's Son. He's Spirit. He's, he's expressed to us 
so we could relate to him. You practice it when you pray because you pray to our father and you pray through the aid of the Holy Spirit because Paul says we don't always know what we ought to pray for so the Holy Spirit help it up with our infirmities so we not only pray to the Father with the help of the Holy Spirit but we pray in the name of the Son so when I talk about Jesus being God in the flesh it's the Father who gave the Son it's the Son gave his life See, God had to come in a body because God as Spirit can't die but a body that is a perfect sacrifice can so when Paul says confess he's saying know who died for you see the problem is you don't know who died for you that wasn't no sissified pump no weakling that was God who saw enough in you to pay the price for you it was God who died confess he is Lord Confess he's Lord, but then believe in your heart. Believe what? That he died. Why did he die? For sin. Two things real quick. He died to pay the penalty of sin. Died to pay the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin is death. Death is separation. When somebody dies, their spirit leaves the body. There is a separation. To die without Jesus is to have eternal separation, which means your spirit will be apart from God forever. Jesus comes and pays the penalty for sin, which is a perfect sacrifice. He dies and pays for sin. So I am no longer apart from God, but I am forever connected to God. Now you don't think you connect it because you're checking out your behavior. You don't think you're in a relationship because you keep focusing on your stumbles. Let me tell you what it's like. I've got five girls, five beautiful girls, Kayla, Kaylin, Kelly, Kelsey, and Kaylee. I got five beautiful girls. None of them are currently married, but one day, one day they're going to get married, and I pray to God I am there to see it, and when I'm there to see it, this is what's going to happen. Somebody is going to say to my daughter, if I'm not doing a ceremony, somebody, if I can keep myself together, somebody is going to say to my daughter, Kayla Angel Clark, do you take let's say Henry Johnson Jr. Do you take Henry Johnson Jr. to be your husband? She will respond, I do. Henry Johnson Jr., will you take Kayla Angel Clark to be your loving wife? And he will say, I do. At that moment, she will now step in to a new relationship prior to this time she's lived one kind of way prior to this time she's operated in one kind of mindset prior to this day she's functioned like she wanted to did what she wanted to do but now that she's crossed into a relationship here's her biggest challenge her biggest challenge now is not to question whether or not she's married her biggest challenge is how to stop acting like she's single. Ah. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. See, your biggest challenge is not that you're in a relationship. This is not you not being God's child. This is you learning how to act like God's child. This is not you being saved. This is you trying to live saved. But there is a difference. I didn't come to teach you tonight how to live saved. You got your pastors and churches for that. I just wanted you to know how you get in. Because see, you can't be better until you get in. Let me say it this way. You got to believe, become, and then behave. <laughs> you got to believe, then you become, and then you behave. We trying to behave before we become. And we can't become because we ain't yet believe. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I didn't kept you too long. Believe, believe that he died. He died for my sin. He not only took away the penalty, but he broke the power. Mm. Believe the power is broken. What do you mean the power is broken, Bishop Clark? That simply means that sin is no longer an obligation. It's only an option. In other words, you don't have to sin. 
See, you didn't see me coming that way, huh? I say you don't have to sin. Don't you know there's a difference between stumbling and jumping? But when you get in a relationship and you understand that when you sin, that's what you wanted to do. And can I tell y'all something? When you got a relationship with God, you ain't got to lie. Too many of y'all lying when you're praying. Open up your prayer, Abraham. You don't even know them people. Go on and tell God the truth about you. Lord, I lied and I like to lie. Please help me with a lying tongue. Lord, I cussed her out and it felt good, but I know it was wrong. Work on me, Jesus. You see, if your prayers going to mean anything to God, they got to mean everything to you. And you got to be honest because God ain't just reading lips. He's reading hearts. Okay, I'm gone. I haven't kept too long. Confess. Believe. That he raised him. From the dead. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I ain't right. I can't get right. Until Jesus comes in. And once Jesus comes in. Now I'm in a relationship. And that relationship makes me right. So now, how do I get in again, Bishop? I'm acknowledging that he's Lord. I'm believing that he died for my sin. Paid the penalty. Broke the power. But he got up. He got up. Now, what's the significance of him getting up? If he had not gotten up, we'd have had a good Friday that went bad. Had he not gotten up, it'd have been like the debit card being declined. Had he not gotten up, it would be like you not being able to pass forward. But thanks be to God, he just didn't pay the bill. But early Sunday morning, I feel something pushing me. Early Sunday morning, he got up to show us that it's all been paid for. Thank God he got up. Wait, 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 wait now. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Believe. Confess. Believe. Call. Here it is. Confess that he's Lord. Believe he died and rose. Call. Use his name. Ask him. See, we got it. Confess. Who is Jesus? He Lord. Believe that he died for my sins, but he got up and asked him in. And you got a relationship. Let me give it to you again. Bruh, little dude from East Oakland. Here's how you get in. Here's how to get in. That modern day poet asked us the question, do thugs go to heaven? Yes, they do. If they can confess, who is he? He's Lord. Ain't nobody else like him. He's in a class hall by himself. Oh, he's Lord. But you not only know that he's Lord, but believe that he died, buried, rose, call on. That's what it takes to get in. Now watch this. Go with me to Luke. Now I don't know if y'all helping me or telling me to hurry up. I don't know what that means. You know, you got to ask folk nowadays, though. You know, y'all sit next to Lady D. You know, look, all right, now come on now. We got. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Listen, listen, listen to this. Listen to this. Now, confess that he's Lord. Believe that he died and rose. And ask him. I'm about to show you. There's a fellow who did it. He never went to church. He never read a scripture. He never got baptized. 
he, he, he never had a chance to go through new members class. But right before he died, he got in. Now, your grandma didn't mean no harm when she would tell you, don't come, don't come to church playing with her. She didn't mean no harm. She, she didn't mean no harm. She didn't mean no harm. That, that, that preacher didn't mean no harm when he, when he said, you got to get yourself together. If not, God ain't going to take you. That didn't mean no harm. Get in. Watch, watch this. Luke 23, verse 39. And one of the mill factors which was hanging said to him, If thou art the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answer rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condition? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing amiss. Watch, let me back up. Confess he's Lord. Believe he died and rose. Ask him, and you get in. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Confess that he's Lord. Believe that he died. And that he rose. Ask him in. And get a relationship. One more time. Confess that he's Lord. Believe that he died. And that he rose. Ask him in. And get a relationship. Watch what this dude did. And he said unto Jesus. Lord, confess that he's Lord. He does it. He's watching Jesus die. And he knows Jesus is not dying because of his sin. He's dying because of their sin. Because he says this man hasn't done nothing wrong. So we got him saying, Lord. We got him saying, I know you're dying for sin because you haven't done anything wrong. But where's the resurrection? And the resurrection is right there in the statement. He said, Lord, remember me. Now, you got to believe the man going to be alive because you're in action. No dead man to keep you on his mind. And Jesus says, this day, you're going to be with me. Oh, San Francisco, good night. I'm going to holler at y'all later. It's been a hell of fun. <laughs> but let me go back on the east side. By telling y'all all these years I've been shouting about the paradise. But that ain't really where the relationship is. Paradise can refer to the place or perhaps even the practice. But what got me, Dr. Bailey, as Jesus looked at this man who ain't never done nothing right. Look at this man who was such a bad criminal. He got caught, convicted, and now he about to die. Looking at this man who ain't done nobody no good looking at this man who's been selfish, narcissistic, looking at this man who perhaps broke hearts, had his heart broken, looking at this man who violated morals and principles, looking at this man who lied, cheated, steal, looking at this man probably sold a little dope on the side, looking at this man wasn't good for nothing, didn't nobody want to be bothered with him. Jesus looks at this man after he confesses that he is Lord, believes that he's going to die and get up and Jesus says to the man, today you're going to be with me. Y'all ain't here. Y'all ain't here. I said, Jesus told a man, you're going to be with me. Jesus told a man, you're going to be with me. I stop by to tell everybody in this room, when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you can confess, believe, and ask him, he'll come into your life right now. And I don't care who don't like it. God told me to tell you, if you ask him, he coming in tonight. He coming in with you smelling like weed. He coming in with alcohol on your breath. He coming in with sin on the calendar. He coming 
coming in when you got plans to mess up. He's coming in. Why? Because when he comes in, he's going to start turning things around. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ought to let him in. You ought to let him in. Let him in tonight. Turn to him and say, neighbor, tonight's a good night to let him in. He will he will save you do I have a witness I didn't got happy again but where my real people at you fake Christians don't participate but my show enough disciples I gotta ask you a few questions the first question is aren't you glad you didn't have to get yourself together that you came just as it was I came to Jesus just as I was Weary, wound and sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he's made me glad. Here's my second question. Let me ask my real folks something. Here's my second question. Since you met Jesus, you know you ain't perfect, but since you met Jesus, you done got a whole lot better. Am I telling the truth? Since you met Jesus, have you gotten better? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm getting better. I ain't all there yet, but I'm getting better. When you see me walking and you see me fall, tell them, say, don't judge me. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But if you just keep on watching, I'm going to keep on growing. That's a word right there. Give somebody the high five say neighbor if you keep on watching I'm gonna keep on growing if you keep on watching I'm gonna keep on growing this my last question and I'm finished for the night I got one question to ask y'all and that is Ain't it good to know Jesus? Ain't it good to know Jesus? Ain't it good to know Jesus? Do y'all know him? Do y'all know him? Do y'all know him now? Do y'all know him? If you know him, give three people a high five and say, neighbor, I know him and I know him for myself. Papa may have, Mama may have, but God bless the child that's got his own. I got him, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, listen, listen to me, listen to me, I really want you to, really want you to hear me, really want you to hear me, if you can just take your seats if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I, I know the hour is far spent, but I don't want to, if you have to leave, Many of you all have to get up early in the morning and get on. I got you. I'll be home for two days, preach Sunday, and, and I'm off to another citywide. And all this year, wherever I'm going, whoever asks me to come, whoever you see me preaching, all I'm doing is talking about Jesus. But, but, but I wanted to, and I, I hope I'm not out of order, you guys. I, I want to, and I'm not here to ask for money. That's not what I'm about to ask for. But, 
But I want to talk to that person who's really struggled with whether or not your relationship was genuine. Because I know the pain. And I know the void of thinking you saved. But then doing something that you know saved folk don't do. And not thinking you ain't saved no more. And, and, and listen, I know many, oh, I know that. See, we know it. We can comprehend it. Thank you, Bishop Jones. But we have problems with apprehending. Comprehend means we understand it. But apprehend, we ain't embraced it. And I came to talk to that person. If you're unsaved, I want you to know today you can be saved. And this ain't got nothing to do with you being baptized. This ain't got nothing to do with you joining church. This ain't got nothing to do with you picking up the Bible. This got everything to do with you getting in a relationship. You see, we got to trust the Holy Spirit to do what he's going to do. We won't make people get saved. And then we won't make people grow up. No, 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 no. Because you can feed somebody by serving them food or you can throw it at them. Two groups of people. The first person you're here and you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've never made a conscious decision. A conscious decision. A conscious, not an emotional one. A conscious decision. You said, you know what? I don't understand everything about the Bible, but I heard what you said tonight. And I do believe he is Lord. And I believe he died for my sins. And I believe he did get up. And I want to ask him in my life. That's when the journey starts. Salvation is not the culmination. It's the inauguration. It's you starting. And if that's you, why every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I'm not asking you to come up. I wouldn't do that to you. I'm not asking you to come up. But every head is bowed and every eye is closed. I just want you to raise your hand. You've never made a conscious decision to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've never made a conscious decision. And I'm talking to the person who you know what you got right now in your life. You know the struggle. You know the problem. You know the issue. I'm talking to that person right now. I want you to know that he loves you. He loves you. I'm going to say this and move to the second category and then I'm done. I was preaching in a distant city and a fella asked me. He said, after preaching, he said, man, I heard you talking about you. You know, you got a pretty good sermon. It was cool. People were moved. He said, but let me ask you something. Man, what happened when you die and you realize all that stuff about Jesus' fake? White man and come up with some stuff and gave you this and you fool, you, y'all fools didn't bit off. What, what you gonna do when you find out it's fake? I told him, man, I'm gonna be mighty disappointed. And he was getting ready to leave. I said, but now hold tight. I said, what happens when you die and you find out it's real? Where you going with this? You see, with Jesus, man, sis, you ain't got nothing to lose. This is not you giving up. Christianity, a relationship with God, is not about you stopping. It's about you starting. And a lot of people are trying to stop before they start. No, you start and then you stop. That's how that works. I wish I had somebody here to help me. If you've never received Jesus Christ, wait right where you are. I want to pray for you. Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. God bless you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Perhaps you were here and you didn't want to raise your hand, but you sincerely want to make a decision to follow Jesus. I simply want you to repeat this prayer after me. Now, you're not saved because you saved the prayer. You're saved because you mean what you say. Simply repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And you rose again to give me your life. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart. And I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. 
In Jesus' name, amen. To that person who is saved, you know you're saved. And you have not, you, you really haven't been excited about your salvation. You got problems on this side. You got this going on. And so much stuff is going on in your life. You forgot the most important thing. And the greatest thing is you got a relationship with God. And if by chance you are outside of the will of God, if by shh, thank y'all. If by chance you are outside of the will of God, and if by chance, I, I didn't, that wasn't disrespectful, was it, bro? Oh, okay. All right. Because I'd pass this talk bad to people. I don't want to be one of them kind of cats. Somebody throw something at you. But, but if, if, you've, if you've fallen and you, you've, you've, you've messed up, and you're a Christian, disciple, I'll leave you with these words. And I know I could go down quoting scripture. But let me go down doing it like I would, I'm wired to do it. If you're a believer and you've messed up. Know that God can use you when you mess up. He just can't use you if you give up. Come on and give God a hand of praise. Come on, we could do better than that. God has been better than that to us. Come on and give God a hand of praise. He's worthy. Come on, we could do better than that. We've had amazing revival this week. Have you been revived? Have you been restored? Have you been renewed? Come on, we could do better than that. Amen. You may be seated. Um... First, I just want to get out before we get emotional. I want to get out some thank yous. Um, first and foremost, thank God. We thank God that what happened is exactly what he wanted to happen. And then to Pastor Bryant, amen, the host pastor, for allowing us to have this platform for it to happen. Amen. To our revivalists, Pastor Pearl, and our other revivalist, Bishop Clark, we thank you. To those of you that did the reflections, we, we thank you. To all of the clergy present, we thank you for coming to support. Pastor Neil, we thank you for being here every night, brother. We appreciate you. Amen to my team. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We will do more. To the intercessors that started off every night with us being on fire, we thank you. To the praise team, amen, God bless you. To the choir, to these great musicians, Thank you to Rochelle, wave your hand, Rochelle, thank you. over AV, we thank you, to Roland, wave your hand, Roland, for making sure that the sanctuary was what it was supposed to be every day that we walked in, to the deacons, we thank you. To the ushers, thank you for standing in your posts every night. To the entire media team, we thank you. To security, wave your hand, security. I see you back there. We thank you. To Sister Deb, which is in the back room right now, she's responsible for all the slides. We thank you. And then to all of you, that came out, give yourselves a round of applause. Every night, we thank you. 
A special thank you to Calvary Hill. Make some noise, Calvary Hill. We thank you for your support, for your teamwork. We thank you. So we, you know, putting this citywide revival together, it was a lot, you know. We dealt with a lot of things, but we were able to make it happen, you know, with the team. And so when we called this one lady, we was like, you know, we need you. She was sick, she wasn't feeling good. We said, Nika, can you just please direct the choir for us, please? And you know, she had a lot going on in her schedule, but she said, I got y'all. Can y'all just give it up for our director, Anika Evans? We want you to come up here and receive this beautiful basket and a token of love from the new generation team. We thank you for your sacrifice and all that you've done to our mother. <laughs> Thank you, Nika. And so from our new generation team, we have somebody in our midst tonight. And um, we want to honor him tonight. He has been such a force in our lives. He has been amazing to us. You know, we call him our uncle. We have been having a relationship for a many long time, a really long time. You know, we call him for everything. He has had our backs in so many ways. And right now, we're going to play a video right now to open up this moment. Hey, Pastor Dudes, it's Nakia. I'm really excited to be a part of this honoring for you. Good evening, good evening, good evening. We hope that you enjoyed the New Generation Citywide Revival. We surely did. We are the team of the New Generation Citywide Revival. And we are excited and elated that tonight we are celebrating our very own president, Pastor Du Sr. Um, we are excited. He has served in our city, um, in the Citywide Revival, 20 plus years, and it is only right that we celebrate him tonight. So, Pastor Dudes, we love you. I love you. I'm excited about what God is doing and just how you poured into us and how we can take the mantle and keep going. And so, with further ado, I'm going to pass it to Vanessa, and she's going to appreciate you as well. Well, thank you, Reverend Dudes. It's been so many years that we have had our relationship. You are Uncle Dudes to us. Every time we have been able to call you for anything that we have needed, I don't know your number by heart. I'm not going to say it loud because everybody going to listen to it. But thank you for allowing us to be in your ears, to, to listen to us when we needed to vent, and just to have our backs. You have done so much for our community, so much for our generation. Anytime we wanted to do anything, you were there to make it happen. We were the first ones to pray yes. dance in the Citywide Revival years yes. ago. You made that happen for us. You have broke so many barriers. You have allowed us to be in your pool. So what you, you guys, guys so don't much know is for us. Thank you so much for being many many who you are in our lives. Lives. And even outside of the church, um, we can call you for personal reasons. And we just thank you for always being open. Thank you for always Every city wide, he presented so scholarships to young us. people yes. going to college. And it was this. Oh, come on, dude. What is going on, Pastor Dudes? I just want to take this time to personally just to say you are such a phenomenal man. God, we thank you so much for what you've done in the community. And we want to play this video of her saying thank you to Reverend Dudes. You have opened your arms to me from day one. And now I call you Reverend Dudes, but now I feel like I can call you Pop. So I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for your service. We love you and we appreciate you. Yes, sir. My pastor, my father, <laughs> my father in the ministry. We love you. We honor you. We acknowledge you today. 
As you always say, only what you do for Christ will last. Thank you for everything that you do, everything that you are. May God continue to bless you and keep you. Amen. It is such a pleasure to do so. I remember when I first got that call from you that I got the scholarship. I was in school, in high school, and literally my counselors, my teachers, they were all stressed for me, thinking like, what is Nakia going to do? Like, she hasn't looked at any other schools. <laughs> and I just trusted you. I trusted God. And I was like, I did everything Pastor Dudes told me to do, so it should be working out. And so, and it did. And it really, I really couldn't even tell you that it would lead me to where I am today from moving to New York and I got to experience so many things like working with 50 Cent and doing styling on and commercials. And the last thing I want to say before working I pass fashion. the mic is to I worked at Bishop big companies, I worked at small companies. I'm at Adobe if right now and that's even reach, insane. And I also cries. started my own business. He cries a lot. All of this I be crying could not be possible if it self. wasn't for you. But so I thank you so, so much. We love you and I hope you enjoy the rest of your celebration. Sorry. And he was talking about one night he was at the club. And I don't know the situation of how he got into it with the man or whatever, but the man came to pull a gun out at him. And he actually shot the gun, but the bullet did not go off. And all I just want to say to you, Pastor Dudes, is that I'm glad that bullet jammed. Because it, you still had purpose on your life. You had a lot to do. And we are the reasons. And we just want to thank you for all you have done and all you have been to us. Pastor Dues, Pastor Dues, Pastor Dues, we celebrate you on tonight. It is only appropriate and um, that we do that on tonight. And we love you. We appreciate you. And so we're going to ask that you come forward, please. We have a few things that we want to present you on tonight. Can you guys celebrate him as he comes forward? We want to give him his flowers while he yet lives. Amen. And then we, we have something here that says, with our greatest appreciation and in recognition of your dedication, faithfulness, and compassion while serving the body of Christ in San Francisco in the citywide revival for 30 plus years, honoring Pastor Timothy S. Dews Jr., thank you for believing in our mission, offering invaluable leadership, investing in the education and spiritual growth of the, new, of the next generation, and fanning the flame of so many. We love you from the team, New Generation Revival Team, March 20th, 2024. And not only do we want, not only do we want to present him with a plaque and flowers, but we want to present him with a check of a thousand dollars. And then we have a certificate for him as well. We love you, Pastor Deuce. Thank you so much for your service of 30 plus years. One more time, everybody, celebrate him. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. Um, amen to father, my mentor. First, we thank God. I know how important our last name is to you. I know the legacy that we have in the city. And I just want you to know that I got it from here. I got us. I got you, and I just want to thank you for the example that you have always set for me. I love you, I honor you, I acknowledge you, but most of all, thank you for showing me how to be a servant of Christ. Because none of this matters. None of, I know you don't need the acknowledgments and the appreciations because one thing you harp on is only what you do for Christ will last. And everything is to God be the glory. So at this time, I just want to say thank you. And without further ado, I'd like to bring up our pastor, 
the host church, the host pastor, Dr. Joseph Bryant. Give him a hand and a God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know it's late. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Well, let me just say, first of all, thank you for uh, coming and visiting our home and blessing us. And to the phenomenal evangelist, Bishop Keith Clark, just shook the house. And, and he's coming. Calvary, he is coming back for us. Amen. He is coming back. for well, y'all know how we are about real good preaching and preaching. So he is coming back for us. And to uh, the New Generation Committee, to all of my Reverend clergy and brothers and sisters in Christ, it is a blessing. And we do thank God for you. I am honored to serve as, um, as a pastor to uh, men who are literally old enough to be my father. I get to be their father. And I'm blessed in that regard. And... Um, Pastor Tim Dews saw me when I first announced my call to ministry 33 years ago. And so when you talk about new generation, I was once new generation. Me and Bishop Clark are now uncles, and so that means you got to be great uncle. Can you just say, Pastor Dews, you are a great uncle. Put your hands together. Come on, come on. Me and Bishop Clark can't be uncles, and he just be uncle too, amen? But for 33 years, I've watched you pour into young folks like me and try to make something of our lives. And now as a senior pastor, I'm grateful that colleagues like myself and Pastor Bailey and others, we, we love you, and we wouldn't want to miss the moment to bless you since we are here to support not only the new generation, not only the vision of Grace Grants, but we're here to support you because you've been pouring into us for a long time. So we're not going to just let you take that one big piece of paper check. We're going to bless you. I'm going to ask Pastor Hillman, would you come on, bring that down here. Put that basket in his lap, and all of us pastors are going to sow into your life right now, starting with, and I already heard from some of y'all, y'all got your hundreds, right? Y'all that get called and text, we're going to sow $100 each into Pastor Dudes, and I'm going to start with 200. Amen. Come on, church, say amen. We're going to bless you. Pastors, let's go. Amen. And if you're not a pastor and you just want to sow into him because you love him, let's go. Amen. Come on, let's go. All right, if someone will give online, that's fine. That's fine. Go ahead and put up on the screen how you can give to Calvary Hill online. We'll make sure he gets it. He's a member here, so we're going to take care of him. Amen. We're going to do this real quick, and then we're going to let y'all go. Amen. But we weren't going to let the new generation give and us, us older generation not so into your life. Amen. We want you to know how much we appreciate you, how much we love you, how much we thank God for you. And you talk about leading through the pandemic. It was hard to pastor through the pandemic. Amen. Well, it was harder to have to pastor pastors. And he pastors all of us. Church, say amen. Amen. So we give God praise for that opportunity to sow back into his life. And we just want him to take it all in. Amen. Amen. God be praised. Come on, let's thank God again. Come on, let's thank God again for Pastor Dues. Thank God for the New Generation Committee and for all of those that have been a part of this week. We have truly been blessed. Amen. And we're going to prepare to, to dismiss and we ask for your continued prayers for one another. We're getting ready for the celebration of why we all do what we do, and that's resurrection. Amen. So Holy Week. Somebody shout Holy Week. We invite you to come through here on Holy Week if you want to come through here. Of course, this Sunday is Palm Sunday, then Good Friday. We will have a Good Friday night service at 6.30 p.m. right here. Somebody say right here. We're going to have seven of our associate ministers handle the seven last words from Calvary Hill. Let me say that again. Seven of our associate ministers will be doing the seven last words from Calvary Hill, just like Jesus did. Amen. So we invite you to be here. And then on Sunday morning, we're going to be here early for 7 o'clock sunrise service, then breakfast, and then we're our worship at 10. And so make sure that you are somewhere worshiping God for Holy Week. God be praised. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Pastor Bailey, would you kindly come? Amen. And ask God's blessing upon our leaving. You can also bless the man of God. But we thank God for Pastor Bailey in as much as he is a scholar.
And as much as he is a teacher par excellence, he is also my musical mentor. And I remember it was 39 years ago when I came to your house and you started teaching me how to use my ear to play gospel music. And I thank you now that I've retired from playing. You just sent your kids over here to play. Amen. Come on, church, say amen for Dr. Bailey. Amen. Don't forget, don't forget tonight, you all remember we were inviting men to come tonight. We were inviting them to come because of that word. But we also want to pick up that book that Bishop Clark has brought us in the boardwalk area. Amen. Let's support the man of God. Church, say amen. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for this fellowship all of this week. Thank you for the word that has come forth. Thank you for reminding us that it's no purpose in catching clean fish. Thank you, Lord. I don't know anybody, and I know a lot of fishermen and fisherwomen, but I don't know anyone that's ever caught a fish that was already gutted and clean. So thank you for Bishop reminding us that we can come to Jesus just as we are. As a matter of fact, there's no other way. So thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for their honoring and remembering this man of God while he yet walks among us, recognizing his sacrifices over the years and what he has done for so many of us. We ask your blessings upon not only him, but his family, and upon all those that have put all of this together this week. Indeed, a new generation. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to recognize them. And now as we go down from this place, I'm asking you to enlist everyone under the sound of my voice in your witness protection program so that the devil could do us no harm. We already know his agenda. It's to steal, kill, and annihilate. But you say you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Everything starts with you. So bless us as we go. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. And the people of God said amen.